Three and a half minutes. That's enough time for what? Filling up your car with gas? Standing in line for coffee? Can we get a timer going? Thanks. Well, every three and a half minutes a person is shot in America. As of 2016, an average of 425 people are shot every day in the United States. That means two people will get shot while you watch this video. That hour-long episode of your favorite show, about 18 people will be shot. Of those 18, four will die. That's bad. In 2015, gun violence was the second leading cause of death by injury in the United States. Among young men aged 15 to 19, it's the number one cause of death overall. Compared to other places in the world, these numbers are off the charts high. In 2016, researchers at Harvard found that Americans were 25 times more likely to be killed by a gun than the citizens of other high-income countries. It makes you wonder, why is it so hard to stop gun violence in the United States? Americans strongly disagree on a range of social and political issues. Gun control, violence prevention, and mental health are no exceptions. But these debates seldom get to the root of the problem. We spoke to Ju Young Lee, a sociologist who studies gun violence in the United States. What we have is a deeply, deeply polarized public around gun control and gun rights. This has been the narrative for at least the past 30 or 40 years, where you have half of the country that is adamant that owning a firearm makes you safer, that the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. But by the same token, you have another segment of the population that believes that having a firearm puts you more at risk of committing a crime, of being shot, of committing domestic violence that could be fatal. So there's been quite a bit of gridlock, at least between these two sides. The result of this polarization and gridlock? Between 1994 and 2018, Congress hadn't passed a single major gun control law. The last federal law aimed at restricting access to guns was the Public Safety and Recreational Firearms Use Protection Act. It made it illegal to manufacture, sell, or own semi-automatic assault weapons like Uzis or AR-15s. But that law expired in 2004. Since then, we've seen the deadliest mass shootings in our nation's history. committed by people with semi-automatic weapons, but no new laws. Do Americans value guns so much they're willing to accept that kind of violence? It's not that simple. In spite of this gridlock and this partisanship, there is a pretty high amount of consensus between gun rights and gun control people around the issues of expanding background checks. Gallup poll from March 2018 showed that 92% of Americans were in favor of requiring criminal background checks on all gun sales to prevent mass shootings at schools. The poll also showed other issues with bipartisan support, raising the age limit to buy a gun from 18 to 21, favoring a ban on the sale of semi-automatic weapons, and in general, the majority want stricter laws covering gun sales. So, if people generally support more gun restrictions, why haven't we seen change? One reason is that we're missing the daily, ongoing nature of gun violence. Whenever gun violence becomes a hot topic in the news, it's typically after a mass shooting in a middle-class neighborhood, in a place where these kinds of things are not supposed to happen. But firearm deaths, non-fatal shootings unfold daily in disadvantaged communities and parts of cities across the United States. To put this in perspective, a gunman killed 12 people during the tragic shooting at a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. We call this a mass shooting. Just think, the same number are shot and killed every three hours of every day in the United States. We probably won't hear about mass shooting that happens in an urban poor neighborhood. 
Most of those, the news will never cover because people assume this stuff just happens all the time, somehow linked to gang culture or drug dealing. When in fact, many people are simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's easy for people who don't live in the line of fire to ignore the problem until it happens somewhere more familiar. Ignoring inner city gun deaths falsely assigns value to certain lives over other lives. This false separation of deserving and undeserving victims downplays the urgency of the problem. It makes it harder to enact change. It also ignores historical prejudices and the systemic structures in place that make marginalized communities more prone to such violence. But what else is going on? When the rubber hits the road and when people are lobbying for change, they're often unable to do so because the NRA is able to mobilize their base and their politicians to resist those kinds of changes. The National Rifle Association, or NRA, is a nonprofit that was founded to promote training, education, and marksmanship. Later, they shifted their focus to preserving Second Amendment rights. They are now one of the most powerful lobbying groups in Washington and have a membership of 5 million people. Since the 1970s, the NRA has backed measures to prohibit the government from collecting data on gun owners. They help push legislation like the 1986 Firearm Owners Protection Act. In an effort to protect gun owners' privacy, the law forbids the Firearms Tracing Center from creating a searchable digital gun database. What that means is today, in an era when almost everyone has powerful technology in their pocket, federal agents trying to solve crimes still have to search through millions of paper records to find information on gun owners. And if the CDC wants to study gun violence as a public health issue, well, the NRA effectively halted that when they lobbied to introduce the Dickey Amendment. It came after a 1993 study that showed a higher risk of gun homicide in homes with guns. Today, Congress can't give out funds that could be used to promote gun control. So, where does that leave us? So if you look at a lot of the nations that are very developed and are typically considered high-income countries, you see that the U.S. is significantly higher in terms of its rates of overall firearm-related deaths. And the reason for that is that the U.S. also leads the world in how many guns are out in the civilian population. According to the 2017 Small Arms Survey, we own nearly 50% of the world's guns. There are 393 million civilian-owned guns in the United States. That's more than one gun for every American. Overall, crime rates in the United States are in line with most other high-income countries. But the amount of deadly crime is much, much higher. Guns aren't just used in crime and homicides, though. Suicide is a public health issue that accounts for two-thirds of gun deaths in the country. A 2006 study found that people who attempt suicide by gun are more likely to die than those who attempt suicide by other means. So places with higher rates of gun ownership experience higher rates of suicide. Take all of these factors, divisive politics, stagnant gun laws, limits on research, lots of guns. No wonder we're seeing so much violence. Though at times, it may seem we're doomed to keep repeating the cycles of violence, change is possible. If you think this kind of violence is unacceptable, raise your voice and demand safer communities. We can live in a society where violence is not inevitable, but preventable. Thank you.